What's going on everybody? Today I will be responding to your guys college football hot takes. If you guys want to be a part of this video then be sure to leave your hot takes down in the comments below on my YouTube community post. I want to start doing these videos once a week so just look out for my post on the YouTube community page. We did this video 11 days ago but we have some more hot takes that I wanted to respond to in this video. And to all the people who left hot takes I want to say I appreciate all the support you guys have left on the channel. And thanks for the hot takes. But let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel. And turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel. Because we upload daily college football content. And we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing. But also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into reading your guys' hot takes. Let's read this first comment. And this person says, Georgia wins the national championship with ease. And Ole Miss is not going to be good. And they will go 9-3. and three. I don't really agree with this hot take. It's hard to say a team will win a national championship with ease. And also, I don't think going 9-3 and three is that bad. Going 9-3 and three in a tough conference is pretty good. And that probably means you are a good team. But I wouldn't even be surprised if this Ole Miss team finished better than 9-3. and three Because I have mentioned in my past videos that I'm very high on this team. And I think they are very close to becoming one of those elite SEC teams up there with Georgia, Alabama, and Texas. Georgia is definitely one of the favorites to win the national championship. They probably will have the most talent among any other teams in college football. And they have Carson Beck back at quarterback, and he could possibly win the Heisman Trophy. This Georgia team will be loaded with talent next season. This next person says Alabama wins the national championship again. Alabama will definitely be a very interesting team next season. They lost their head coach, and they're going to be a lot different without Nick Saban. But don't be surprised if we see Kalen DeBoer do some great things for Alabama football. Kalen DeBoer has proved himself as a winner at every level. And maybe we see Kaylin DeBoer bring home a national title within the next five years. And I wouldn't even say next year is out of the picture. It's very unlikely, but you never know. Kaylin DeBoer helped lead a Washington team that had very little resources to the national title. And imagine what Kaylin DeBoer could do with a bunch of five stars on the team. I really don't know what to expect from Alabama. But this next person says Penn State may consider letting James Franklin go after this season. I don't think Penn State will beat Ohio State or Michigan. And this is kind of getting repetitive. Not saying they will fire him, but the Lions will give thought into it. They've just been stuck in the middle for so long. James Franklin has been the head coach of Penn State since 2014, and he has been consistently good, but he cannot win the Big Ten or win the big games. And maybe next season he does get fired. I don't know if that would actually help Penn State though, because they have been very good at the very least, and the playoffs have now been expanded to 12 teams, so they can definitely get more opportunities to make the playoffs. So we shall see what happens. With Michigan kind of falling off, maybe they find a way to at least beat Michigan. This next person says, I think Colorado will struggle in 2024. i like if you would explain to me why you think they will struggle, but off of what you are just saying, I don't know exactly what you mean, but me personally, I think they will be better than they were last season, and I think they will win at least six games and become bowl eligible. The Big 12 will be easier competition, and they will also have their star players back, along with four stars that they brought in from the transfer portal. They've done a really good job of beefing up the line of scrimmage on offense and on defense, and I think they will actually compete in the Big 12. This next person says Notre Dame will have a rematch against Ohio State in the playoff from last season's showdown where Notre Dame lost in heartbreaking fashion. I don't really know what to say about this, but it could definitely happen. If they both make the playoffs, there's a chance they will play in a rematch, and it would probably be a pretty even matchup too. I think it's very likely for both the Notre Dame and Ohio State to make the playoffs. It's going to be very interesting to see a lot of these playoff games, because a lot of them could be rematches. So it's not out of the picture to see Ohio State versus Notre Dame in next season's 12-team playoff. This next person says, my Texas Longhorns are going to go undefeated in the regular season in 2024, in my opinion, because their schedule is favorable. I think Texas has a shot at going undefeated for sure, definitely if they beat Georgia, but just by looking at their schedule, I'd say they would probably lose a the game. They have to play Oklahoma and Michigan as well, and they should win both those games, but they will be tough games, and Oklahoma beat Texas this past season, so that game is not a guaranteed win. Texas also plays at Texas A&M, so that won't be an easy game either. I think it's going to be really hard to go undefeated in the Big Ten or the SEC. And I really don't think Texas will go undefeated, but it's definitely not out of the picture because Texas is returning a lot and they might just have the best offense in the country next season. Texas is definitely a top contender for the national championship next year in my eyes, but we'll have to see how they fare against SEC competition all season. It will be new look matchups and I just don't see Texas going undefeated in year one, but I like that hot take. This next person says, Maybe a bit too many hot takes, but here goes nothing. 
Even with Riley Leonard and Mike Elko leaving, Duke will still be one of the ACC's best. They looked very good in their bowl game, and Malik Murphy will be a very good fit at quarterback. The defense is above average, and Manny Diaz was a good hire. He really wasn't that bad at Miami, and it could very well be that it's too hard to win there. I really like this hot take. It wasn't too long, and you covered some good things. And I don't know if Duke will compete in the top five of the ACC, but maybe they are in the top eight range. It's going to be hard for them after losing Riley Leonard and a bunch of other talent, but they did have a good bowl game performance against Troy. But I wouldn't say it was anything spectacular. Troy's not a great team. We'll have to see how Malik Murphy does, and that will determine a lot of things. And I think Malik Murphy can actually be pretty solid at Duke. I just don't know if he'll have the offense to work with, and that can make it very tough for a quarterback. Their offense is definitely a problem, and their defense might take a step back as well, so I really don't know. I'll be predicting their schedule at some point, so we'll see where I have them, but I would assume I would have Duke around the middle of the ACC, or just below the middle, like around 10. I think they could make a bowl game, but I just don't see them being one of those top teams in the ACC. There's just so much talent in college football, and teams like Virginia Tech, NC State, and Georgia Tech all could be a lot better. The ACC and Big 12 are very interesting to me, because there's so many solid teams, but no juggernauts. Unless you want to consider Florida State the juggernaut of the ACC, I guess that kind of makes sense. But I do think Duke will be a pretty average team, but it will be very interesting to see what Malik Murphy does in the offensive system. And the hire may be a solid hire because Manny Diaz has been coaching for over 20 years and he has a lot of experience. So I could be wrong and Duke could be better, but we'll see. I know I didn't get a bunch of people commenting hot takes, only a few people commented hot takes. We got a comment from this person again, and this person says, I think Michigan is going to take a major step back because their schedule is brutal to me. They definitely have a pretty brutal schedule, and they play Texas, Oregon, Ohio State, but they also play USC and Washington. I see a 9-3 or a 10-2 team for sure, but I still think they can make the 12-team playoffs, as long as they are in the top 4 or top 3 range of the Big Ten. They could definitely lose to Ohio State and Oregon, but don't be surprised if they were able to knock off one of them. Definitely Ohio State, because they've already beat them three years in a row. I do think this Michigan team will be a bit worse next year, but I still think they will be a very talented team that can compete with absolutely anybody. They have a bunch of All-Americans returning on defense, and the offense will be a completely new-look offense, but Donovan Edwards will be a very good replacement at running back, and Michigan still has Colston Loveland returning at tight end. And Alex Orji could be decent at quarterback, even if he's more of a running quarterback. I could honestly see this team being one of the best rushing attacks in the country, but I think they are lacking some talent on offense, and that will hold them back from winning the Big Ten. But all I'm saying is do not count out this Michigan team. I think people are overreacting to what they're losing, and Sharon Moore will also be a decent replacement at head coach. And this isn't a Washington type of situation where they have basically no players returning. They still have a lot of talent on this team, and they have a bunch of guys who could step up. For example, Donovan Edwards at running back. He's a very solid running back, and he destroyed Washington's defense in the national championship. I've seen people say Michigan will go 5-7 and seven next season, but I really hope they were joking because that's not happening. Maybe it happens in a couple years, but next season I definitely think Michigan will be a 12-team playoff contender, and don't count them out. This next comment is from a new person, and this person says, Gators go 10-2 and two and make the playoffs. By the Gators, I'm pretty sure he means Florida out of the SEC, and I like this hot take. Florida is a team that hasn't been talked about much. They're kind of in the same situation as Miami where they have talent and they have all the potential in the world, but they continue to underperform every year. And there could definitely be a head coaching change with these two teams, maybe as soon as the end of next season. But maybe Florida is a team that is being slept on. They've done a consistently good job at recruiting well the last couple years. And they brought in some additions to the team from the transfer portal that may help the defense out. They also have two of the best players out of high school committed to them. Five-star quarterback DJ Lagway and five-star defense alignment LJ McCray. I think Graham Mertz will start next season at quarterback, but maybe we see this team be a top contender in the SEC in a couple years. But next year, I don't think I see them making the playoffs. I think they will be better and compete in more games, but they had a pretty bad season in 2023, and they have a lot of work to do on defense if they do want to compete in the SEC. And their schedule will be brutal anyway, so I don't see them winning 10 games. It would be too big of a step to make. This next person says, My hot take is that the Texas Longhorns will win the SEC in 2024 and Quinn Ewers will win the Heisman Trophy. I know there was already a Texas-related hot take in this video, but I added this one as well because of what you said about Quinn Ewers. And I think it's very likely we see Quinn Ewers win the Heisman Trophy. If any quarterback could keep Arch Manning waiting on the sidelines for two years, then you best believe they better win the Heisman Trophy. Because I think it's really unbelievable that a player as hyped up as Arch Manning has been will be the backup for the second year in a row and it's because Quinn Ewers is a special player, and he's going to have the receivers to throw to, and I think it's really possible he wins the Heisman Trophy in 2024. 
And I think Texas could possibly win the SEC in 2024 as well. It won't be easy, but I think it will come down to Texas and Georgia. I'm going to read one more hot take, and this person says, Ohio State will have the Big Ten's best defense with the elite front seven staying intact, and the secondary making some big additions, most notably Caleb Downs, who had a great freshman year at Alabama. I completely agree with you on this one. I think it's very likely Ohio State has the best defense in the Big Ten, possibly the best defense in the country. They returned a lot of players, and the secondary is going to be very scary with Denzel Burke returning and Caleb Downs now joining the secondary. This defense should be very dominant. The only team I could say that has more talent than Ohio State is possibly Georgia. But if Ohio State doesn't get the job done this next season, then that would be completely embarrassing. They have all the talent in the world. Now they just have to play their best football and actually execute. Ryan Day has to show the world that he belongs at Ohio State this next season. And he's going to have a lot of pressure on his shoulders. But Michigan lost a lot, and Ohio State is gaining a lot. And Ohio State needs to beat Michigan or Ryan Day may just be in the hot seat. But I think this Ohio State team heading into 2024 could possibly even win the Big Ten. Time is ticking for Ryan Day, so let's see what he could do in 2024. But anyways, that's going to do it for the video. Be sure to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel because we upload daily college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing, but also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that's going to do it, guys, and peace out.